Well, it was a it was over a period of about 25 years that, uh, in one form or another, I was you know drinking or using something. Life is a delicate gift, and every moment we exist with our loved ones is a precious whisper of time. We never know when our eyes will close forever, or when our next breath will be counted as the last one. You must be curious why I am saying this. Well, because in today's video, we will be witnessing the flabbergasting uncertainty of life when the shocking news details of Stevie Ray Vaughan's helicopter crash took over the internet, the accident happened in dense fog after a concert at the Alpine Valley Music Theater, and created an unexpected hustle and bustle among his fans who were ready to attend his concert. Unfortunately, August 27th, 1990, is still marked as a day that should have been remembered for its magic, but it presented us with one of the most unbearable losses. It all started when the Alpine Valley Festival in East Troy Wisconsin hosted a night of pure, brilliant musicals. On this night, history was being written as a magical tale by legends like Eric Clapton, Buddy Guy, Robert Cray, and the Vaughn brothers, Jimmy and Stevie Ray, who had literally set the stage on fire. Even after the mega event finished, the crowd still rode high because of that incredible show. But as the night slipped away, something unthinkable happened. Something that upturned the world of music. The day, which began as a night of joy, turned into a moment of intense sadness, leaving the world stunned and heartbroken. Before we find out the tragedy that took place on that day, let's first see who Stevie Ray Vaughan actually was. Stevie Ray Vaughan blessed the world of music with another pop and rock singer with his birth on October 3, 1954. Unaware of the fact that this little boy will take over the world with his sensational yet pop voice, his parents gifted him with a guitar at the very young age of maybe three or four. With a big dream of conquering the world, he started his journey as a musician before he even reached his teenage years. Hence, as he grew older and started his high school years, he stayed up late, pouring his heart into the blues at clubs in Deep Ellum, Dallas, while others slept unknowingly that a great celebrity was being born under their noses. By 1969, when Stevie was still a student, he had already recorded a song with a local band for Stax Records. However, the structured environment couldn't keep the wild wandering spirit secured as the call of the blues was too strong. Following his will, Stevie left high school at the age of 17 in 1972 and moved to Austin, Texas, a city where music breathed at every corner. What is it, Stevie Ray, about Texas that you think makes it such a breeding ground for such great music? The dirt. The dirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been, it's been a... There's been a lot of a lot of influences come from there because there's been a lot of sort of growing going on. It became the place where his extraordinary talent truly began to flourish. With a passion for the blues that ran deep in his blood, he formed several bands, eventually creating Double Trouble in 1978. The raw energy of the untamed band caught the attention of significant musicians, including Mick Jagger which was a banger success for this young talent. On a fateful day in 1982, Destiny had arranged a mega surprise for Stevie, which upturned his life. It was none other than the legendary Mick, who invited him and his band to a private party in New York City. Hence, this invitation further led to an offer to perform at the Montreux Jazz Festival in Switzerland, where they made a historic performance as the first band to play without a record deal, and took over the music world. The band's show was no more than a short, electrifying performance, 
catching the eyes of legends like David Bowie and Jackson Brown, who further promoted the band to their friends. The band Double Trouble soon signed a record deal with CBS Epic Records. By 1983, Stevie was named Best New Talent and Best Electric Blues Guitarist in Guitar Player Magazine's Reader's Poll. Moreover, he marked his debut album's instrumental track in 1984 as it earned him a Grammy nomination. His following albums, Couldn't Stand the Weather, 1984, Live Alive, 1985, and Soul to Soul, 1986, cemented his status as one of the greatest blues guitarists of his generation. Nevertheless, Destiny had written a dark chapter in his life, which put him in hurdles and placed a black spot on his initial years of fame and popularity. As the band flourished, its leading musician, Stevie, started to live a rock and roll life to its fullest, falling into the addiction of alcohol and drug abuse. He did this injustice to himself and got himself fallen into this haunted trap. Fast forwarding to 1986, when on a European tour, his brain stopped responding. Hence, his body gave up and he dramatically collapsed. Stevie was admitted to a rehabilitation center in Georgia. Therefore, after spending his time in the center where his wild animal was being tamed, he caught control of his addiction. Soon, he was cleared of all allegations and was allowed to leave the hospital. But as he left the place, he dedicated himself to Alcoholics Anonymous and its 12-step program. This led him to release In Step in 1986. This grand release was not only an album, but a testament that stood firm to his hard-won sobriety and strength. Once, Stevie Ray Vaughan was just another kid at home driving his parents crazy playing the guitar all the time. Nevertheless, on the evening of August 26, 1990, destiny brought him to his tragic end when the Alpine Valley Music Theater in East Troy, Wisconsin, hosted a significant blues festival. The team comprised some of the most influential names in the industry, including Eric Clapton, Buddy Guy, Robert Cray, and, of course, Stevie Ray Vaughan. That night, Stevie gave a performance he knew would be remembered for ages. His latest version of Sweet Home Chicago was an emotional yet decisive moment that blended the spirit of the blues with his unique soul-stirring style. After the show, the musicians talked excitedly about their future. They were really looking forward to the idea of Stevie joining Clapton for a series of shows at London's Royal Albert Hall, which was a tribute to the late Jimi Hendrix. Nonetheless, as they spoke of new beginnings, none could have predicted that this would be Stevie Ray Vaughan's last performance. The last moments of Stevie's life started in the early hours of August 27, 1990, as a tragedy was soon to be unfolded that would forever change the world of music. The night began with a sense of celebration, energy, and raw emotion as legendary blues guitarist Stevie Ray Vaughan took the stage for what would be his final performance. The concert was electric, the kind that sent shivers down Stevie's spine, and he left the audience wanting more. After the concert, Vaughn and his band, Double Trouble, were in high spirits as they delivered a performance that would be remembered for upcoming years. However, as the musicians and crew gathered backstage, a sudden urgency began to build. Clapton's tour manager, Peter Jackson, entered the room, his face pale with a concern which he urgently informed the band about. He said that the weather was worsening and they needed to leave soon. Moreover, time was also running out. At around 1 a.m., four Bell Jet Ranger helicopters belonging to Omni Flight Helicopters Incorporated stood ready at a nearby golf course. Their mission was to transport Clapton and his crew members, including Vaughn, to Chicago. Among the passengers were Stevie Ray Vaughn, his brother Jimmy Vaughn, and Jimmy's wife, Connie. But as they prepared to board, an unexpected change in plans disrupted their arrangements. 
Jimmy and Connie were informed that only one seat was available for them instead of the three initially reserved. Faced with this sudden change, Jimmy decided to stay behind with his wife, allowing Stevie to take the last seat. Stevie boarded the helicopter, a Bell 206B Jet Ranger with tail number N16933. Manufactured in 1977, the aircraft had been in service for several years. It wasn't unusual for these helicopters to be used in various situations, but what was strange was the man in the pilot's seat. Among the four pilots operating helicopters that night, Jeffrey Brown stood out. Instead, Brown had to rely on visual cues, which was a dangerous requirement when the night sky was shrouded in fog. Just hours earlier, Brown had attempted an IFR clearance and instrument rating exam, a crucial certification for a pilot, but he failed. As Stevie's helicopter lifted off from the golf course, the weather was far from ideal. Reports suggested that visibility was low, with some fog patches hanging in the air. The helicopter took off at a lower altitude than the others. It made a southeast turn towards an area with elevated terrain, as this was the only route Brown was familiar with. But in the dense fog, familiarity wasn't enough, and it turned into uncertainty. The helicopter was supposed to follow State Highway 120, a route Brown knew well, but shortly after takeoff, the aircraft veered off course. Brown, unaware of the deviation, was flying blind in more than one way. He didn't know that the helicopter was heading directly toward a 300-foot-high ski hill. And then, with a force that none of the passengers would have been able to comprehend, the helicopter crashed into the side of the hill. It was just 0.6 miles away from the golf course where they had taken off. The crash was immediate and devastating. All five occupants, including Stevie Ray Vaughan, were killed instantly. The shocking details of Stevie Ray Vaughan's helicopter crash sent shockwaves through the music world and beyond. Eric Clapton's publicist, Ronnie Lippin, confirmed the tragic loss stating that several members of Clapton's tour team were among those who had perished. The loss of Bobby Brooks, Nigel Brown, Colin Smythe, and, of course, Stevie Ray Vaughan, was a blow that hit hard and deep. It was one of the most horrible and devastating scenes, a contrast to the vibrant energy of the concert just hours earlier, which was still fresh in the air and was now polluted with the tragic news of Steve's death. There was no evidence of mechanical failure or malfunction. The helicopter had been in perfect working order. Following the incident, the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, conducted a thorough investigation and later determined the probable cause of the accident. Captain Polly Robinson, a member of the Wisconsin Civil Air Patrol, described the crash site as being located on a 1,000-foot ski hill, about 100 feet below the summit. The debris was scattered over an area of about 200 feet, and the emergency locator transmitter wasn't activated until about four hours after the crash, which only added to the horror of the situation. By the time they found the wreckage, it was too late. Stevie Ray Vaughan, one of the greatest blues guitarists of all time, was gone. Legal actions quickly followed. The families of the passengers immediately filed lawsuits against multiple parties, including Omni Flight Helicopters, Bell Helicopter, and Allison Gas Turbine, the engine manufacturer. The lawsuits claimed that the helicopter charter company should have known that the weather conditions were not suitable for safe flying. They argued that decision to proceed with the flight in such situations was reckless and irresponsible. The NTSB's final report confirmed what many had already suspected. The crash was caused by the pilot's decision to continue flying under visual flight rules in adverse weather conditions. The fog and darkness made it impossible for Brown to see the hill until it was too late. Had he been certified to fly using instruments, the outcome might have been different but that cost the five legendary lives of the music world.
including that of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie was not only a great talent, but also probably the greatest popularizer. If the next show we do is the last one I ever get to do, it sure would be a shame if I didn't really try and give it all my best. Hence, the lawsuits eventually reached settlements, but the specific amounts remained undisclosed. The families received some measure of justice, but no amount of money could ever bring back what was lost. In the aftermath of the crash, both Eric Clapton and Jimmy Vaughn were called to the morgue to identify the bodies. It was a heartbreaking task, one that no one should ever have to face. The autopsy report revealed the extent of Stevie Ray Vaughn's injuries, which included a torn aorta, skull fractures, and damage to his spleen and liver. All of these injuries were fatal. There were no drugs or alcohol involved, and all the victims had been wearing their seat belts. It was a tragic yet plain and simple incident that put the world under the shadows of grief. Despite the unimaginable loss, the music world came together to honor Stevie Ray Vaughan's legacy. A solemn procession took place at Laurel Land Memorial Park in Dallas. Pick up a guitar and it just, it touch your soul, just in a heartbeat, you know. It does give me a peaceful feeling to know that if anyone cleaned up their life and turned things around, it was certainly Stevie Ray Vaughan, so I really feel like he's with the angels right now where more than 1,500 people gathered to pay their respects. Moreover, another 3,000 admirers stood outside the chapel, unable to get in, but were determined to be part of the farewell. Stevie's influence had touched so many lives, and his loss was felt deeply by fans and fellow musicians alike. Among those who came to say goodbye were some of the biggest names in music, including Eric Clapton, Stevie Wonder, Buddy Guy, Dr. John, ZZ Top, Bonnie Raitt, Jackson Brown, and Nile Rodgers. They all gathered to honor a man whose talent and passion for music had left an indelible mark on the world. In 1991, the governor of Texas, Ann Richards, declared October 3rd as Stevie Ray Vaughan Commemoration Day in honor of his contributions to music and his lasting legacy. The following years saw numerous tributes and memorials dedicated to Vaughn. In 1993, his mother, Martha Vaughn, established the Stevie Ray Vaughn Memorial Scholarship Fund, providing scholarships to students at W.E. Griner Middle School in Oak Cliff, who aspired to pursue careers in the arts. A memorial statue was unveiled on auditorium shores in Austin, Texas, in 1994, becoming the first public monument in the city dedicated to a musician. It was a fitting tribute, located near the very spot where Stevie had performed his final concert in Austin. The statue serves as a lasting memoir of the impact that Stevie Ray Vaughan had on the world of music. Being fascinated by the fact that he never, ever seemed to be lost in any way I mean, what and the lives of those who loved him furthermore in 1996 a tribute album titled a tribute to stevie ray vaughn was released featuring artists like eric clapton bb king buddy guy and robert cray performing some of vaughn's most beloved songs i was giving up on love The album was a celebration of Stevie's life and music, a way for his friends and fans to keep his memory alive. Apart from this, the Grammy Awards honored Stevie Ray Vaughan with several awards, including a Lifetime Achievement Award in 2021. On behalf of every guitar player and every blues lover, it is the honor of a lifetime to induct Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. His work continues to inspire new generations of musicians, and his legacy lives on through the countless lives he touched with his music. In the end, we can only see Stevie Ray Vaughan's story as one of the most beloved yet tragic tales.
His music continues to echo with listeners around the world, reminding them of the power of passion and the importance of cherishing every moment. While his life was cut tragically short, his influence remained as strong as ever and became evidence of the long-lasting power of the blues. With that said, let's sign off. But before that, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. See you in the next video.